Hello and welcome to a cover story conversation. Today we are going to be taking a look at the changing politics of Rahul Gandhi. Ever since the elections of 24, he's just, you know his politics have got some sort of a fillip. I would say actually ever since Bharat Jodo Yatra, the elections and the mandate you know kind of cemented his politics more so not so much as how much the Congress got, but how much the BJP did not get. That has sort of you know given Rahul Gandhi a new lease of life, and we've had yet again another relaunch of Rahul Gandhi, which I think this may be the final relaunch because one thing is different you know compared to all the other. The launches this one is consistent but before i go any further let me introduce my panel i have with me rashid kidwai someone who's a keen observer and knows what's happening within the congress party we've read his books on the the congress 24 akbar road and uh, sonia gandhi's biography and he's a senior journalist um, and a columnist and uh, sandeep ghosh he's a political commentator and a columnist and someone who's uh, you know we've been also looking at his analytics also of rahul gandhi and in fact uh, sandeep you are one person who has uh, you know uh, uh, given a very uh, good critique of Rahul Gandhi but now do you think that his politics are changing am I right or do you think uh, let's give him more time wait and watch before we come to anything see politics definitely is changing Rahul Gandhi either evolves or relaunches whatever it is because a lot of it I think is not uh, my again, critical view is not something which is happening internally from him this is what his managers uh, for me to use an euphemistic word his advisors or people uh, you know, uh, give him. So the current avatar of his, uh, the way it's been packaged, uh, etc., is definitely different. But I'll never say final or final. It, you can see if uh, somewhere this fizzles out or doesn't work, uh, he uh, may have to reinvent himself again. And more importantly, I personally think that assuming this all thing works and he does come to power, uh, he will definitely have to modify his rhetoric. Because what he is doing today to, uh, you know, gain popularity on votes, I'm not too sure how that will work if he were to be at the helm of a government. So he may have to do that. Uh, so uh, uh, answer to your first question, definitely yes. But as we go along, you know, I would like to uh, make a distinction between three things. As I say uh, one is the strategy, uh, the communication strategy, etc., which you are talking about, which I think works. And the other two bits are what I'd say the message and the messenger. And mm. that is something uh, where I have certain different views. But the first part, right or wrong, uh, uh, making a very, very amoral judgment or um, non judgmental position, I think his uh, uh, strategy in terms of communication, in terms of impact, is working. Uh, Rashid, your take on Rahul Gandhi, you know, uh, he's also been in the news for his trip to the US. In fact, I should have mentioned that in my intro also. How do you see that, you know, suddenly whatever Rahul Gandhi says is, uh, you know, uh, pushing the headlines? Uh, yeah, so Priya, it's very interesting that Rahul Gandhi, while he has remained same, I don't see a major difference of him, Raj, Rahul Gandhi being the uh, pre, uh, you know, Bharat Jodo Yatra or pre Lok Sabha election, and now it is our perception, our in the sense that media, the you know, the Rahul's opponents, you know, their perception have changed, and they have started, you know, begin to take him far more uh, seriously and a sort of you know contender. So that goes to Rahul Gandhi's credit, and he realizes. So the BJP, which I mean, I should not be saying BJP, actually, Mr. Narendra Modi, the way he came in, like, let's say in 2012, 13 onwards, and after 14, he was dominating the entire narrative. And what was he doing was a major uh, di disruptor, you know, destabilizer. He was going against what it was earlier, pre-2014. Uh, now, what we are saying from 2024, June 2024 onwards, that Rahul Gandhi has become a major, you know, destabilizer or disruptor. So whatever he says makes news. You look at, you know, his remarks in US uh, and the entire Mr. Amit Shah, the entire Council of Ministers, spokespersons, they all are reacting. So when you, I think Mr. Ghosh and you, both of you know better, you know, the means of and methods of, you know, political messaging, communication, etc. It's always advantage. It's not so important what you're saying. Because, you see, our polity is highly polarized. So whatever Rahul Gandhi says makes sense to, let's say, 20-30% of, you know, so to say, his uh, support support base in, in society. And, of course, there are like, let's say, 40% people who are opposed to him, they oppose. So he, it's a, you know, there is no discourse, there is no debate about the merits of what he's saying. He gets away. 
and therefore i think the bjp needs to change uh, you know its strategy because rahul gandhi is getting more and more you know eyeballs space and all those things one more thing priya i want to say this bjp is also attacking on a old school model you know going to foreign videsh ki dharti se wo bola are yeah. when you are suppose i mean asking a technical question to mr ghosh and you both, both of you what if i any politician when he tweets is he doing desi or is he doing videshi because after all twitter insta you know facebook right. they all are you know i mean uh, you know us based companies and you know whatever you say or write it gets uh, you know so to say archived in 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 us so therefore and the whole world can see it with a click of a mouse or without a mouse actually so point i'm saying in this era of you know uh, sort of internet and social media to say that you know you've gone it's a very old school kind of you know thing which makes no sense actually in in, in reality no i would uh, agree with you but i guess the um, uh, of uh, the criticism is the you know that uh, you are addressing you i mean it's not that where you're saying is also important you know you have a audience that you're talking to of uh, you know uh, and the fact that an indian is going out there in foreign so and criticizing there is little different semantics of that but prime minister modi has done the same so you know absolutely for yeah for the bjp to criticize but sandeep his uh, comments um, uh, of what he has said uh, you know the content of what he has said also is interesting Thing. he's taken on the rss he's talked about the divisive politics of prime minister modi uh, he targeted the sikh community uh, or he uh, singled out the sikh community saying that they will feel unsafe which i think the comparison didn't really go down well but uh, by and large what do you make of his comments uh, yeah uh, i will uh, uh, sort of digress a little bit uh, starting mm -hmm. from where rashid says uh, you know it cuts both ways uh, uh, what rashid was precisely saying in terms of the communication today uh, when you are talking in the us uh, i think they are very conscious that when you are talking in the us you are not just talking about us uh, you are uh, a lot of it is also uh, gets amplified in the domestic you know home constituency you know uh, whatever you say there is obviously an impact in certain interested constituency uh, uh, wherever you are speaking in that country but there is a large part of it there is a spillover or actually a direct uh, communication to in your home, home country now this can cut both ways because if you are making a comment which may be uh, music to the ears of the people who who is there in that particular room or audience for you where you are speaking in washington or uh, wherever uh, uh, there is also the impact you cannot rule out of what that carries back home and i think there lies the problem with these sort of comments about sikhism etc uh, it might uh, you know sound very good to Uh, people, it might suit uh, Rahul Gandhi's own uh, this thing to tell people that uh, you know Sikhs are or minorities are under pressure, so Sikhs can't think of wearing a turban or uh, kada, etc. Whether it's right or wrong, uh, it might appeal to an Edward Luce who's uh, there or somebody else hearing it. But the amplification of that coming into India, uh, that also you have to factor it in because tomorrow uh, that could be used against him. at various uh, you know platform for uh, everywhere and that can be played up uh, uh, you know ad nauseum so that is something which today's world one has to be very very careful of even when i'm speaking with you one thing is to think that the three of us and some of your core constituents uh, uh, viewers are listening uh, to it but today's world as you said if i say something here a clip of that gets put out in uh, social media or somewhere that could go viral to many other constituents uh, uh, whether i like it or not or whether they are uh, they will uh, uh, you know distinguish between what sandeep ghosh is speaking in news x or elsewhere uh, mm. so that's that's the risk of today's media you know you cannot it's no longer one small headline coming from the us as a so and so indian leader had spoken here and then you always uh, question and you know say oh i've been misquoted etc but today it's everything is on a video you know uh, either somebody can clip it to their advantage or somebody okay. can play the entire thing say that hey he is saying is misquoted but this is what he said across 30 minutes yeah so that yeah rahul that has always been his problem you know the messaging i think rashid is it still uh, going off the cuff or is there some sort of a concerted uh, you know uh, strategy at play and b do you think he should carry on with the tirade against the rss is it time that he find some other issue or is it good to keep hammering on the issue rashid so uh, obviously he's saying sorry i think that was a question to rashid uh, uh, but 
Take it if you want. Uh, we can. Yeah, I am saying that you know, obviously, he thinks certain things have worked. In your own program, I don't want to name some of our common friends who are Congress supporters, but are also selectively critical when it has to be. Uh, uh, you know, one uh, one of our good friends here who comes up often on your show, he was very, very critical about the caste polit thing when it was happening in Madhya Pradesh and all during the state mm -hmm. election. And he thought that Congress was barking up the wrong tree. But Rahul Gandhi seems vindicated. He thinks that caste census card has worked for him. So he uh, he or his advisors, whosoever uh, advise him, whether it's in Zepikiti or his uh, or other uh, people, um, you know, uh, Gideas or other people who who advise him, they'll say, "See, we told you it worked. So continue, um, uh, you know, hammering that point in." So he is doing it. Uh, that's why I said Rahul Gandhi's judgment is very often uh, guided by his. Uh, advisors or uh, hmm. his uh, managers, so to speak. Rashid, your take on this? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So, yeah no, no, I think, uh, you know, you also have a, a, you know, a very kind of, you know, uh, definite view on this subject. But uh, the thing is, Rahul Gandhi is doing it as part of design. This is not something, Priya, we must remember, he does not get that many opportunities. And I, would, I don't want to talk about it, whether it is mainstream media's fault or this is his, or as Mr. Ghosh was saying, his manager's mm -hmm. fault. He has sort of, you know, tries to often, uh, you know, demonize that, uh, you know, the Indian mainstream media, the television media as someone who are sort of puppets of this government, etc. So when he goes mm -hmm. abroad, he gets a lot of, you know, platforms and the same mainstream media of India, you know, you know, sort of in a critical way, but they highlight his thing. So he, he thinks what he's doing is fine. You look at one by one, you look at the kind of, uh, you know, sort of, uh, uh, insecurity among minorities. He, I, to my mind, he consciously picked, you know, Sikh community instead of Muslims because that would have created a bigger, you know, outrage and it could have been what Mr. Ghosh was suggesting, a kind of counterproductive. So with six, he was very sort of sure-footed and he knew that he will get away. He's talking about, uh, you know, sort of, uh, you know, election commission not doing its duty. So that's part of his political agenda. He's talking about uh, reservations. He's talking about, you know, constitution not being, you know, implemented or con constitution being violated by through government actions, etc. This is all areas of his, you know, uh, very, very dear to him, part of caste senses, all those, his political agenda. So he's perpetuating that and he's finding traction. And that is why I feel and... Uh, you and Mr. Ghosh can both, you know, come in on that. I think that's where the BGP and Mr. Modi, uh, you know, is losing the plot. They don't understand. They are reacting to him. And that is helping Mr. Rahul Gandhi. Priya, this is a world of, you know, a kind of, as uh, you know, about message, uh, you know, messaging, communication, and Rahul Gandhi seems to be getting away. Here, what he's seeing, the merit of it is become secondary. Fact of the matter is, wo bazi maar raha hai. See, so he is a talking point. The entire politics is, you know, sort of political discourse for the last two days have been around his U.S. visit. Fact of the matter is he's not met, you know, uh, uh, presidential candidates. Fact of the matter is that he's not that he's being invited by big caucus and so many. Anybody who understands U.S. and, uh, you know, Indian dignitary right. or Indian leader opposition going, what would be something uh, very different. But still, his, uh, you know, his visit to U.S. is far more, in terms of communication, successful than any other, you know, Indian VIP. So that is something the BJP needs to, you know, shift gears. And they are not. Mm -hmm. And that is why I'm saying it is proving counterproductive as far as the ruling party or ruling coalition or Mr. Modi is concerned. Indian VIP, do you include the Prime Minister also in that? I would say so, yes. Yes, it's more successful than a Modi visit. Precisely, if you look at the recent Prime Minister's, you know, visits abroad, they have not created that kind of traction the way Rahul's visit has created. Sandeep, do you agree with that one? Or is see, Modi's visit just uh, reaction uh, yes, because yes of the office? No. Uh, see, yeah. Yes and no. Uh, uh, the uh, second part of it is, you see, it's not a question of whether it's Modi or uh, otherwise. It, it's I would say the message. It's not a question. Hmm. So if BJP wants to use Modi as the messenger, there will be certain limitations. Because Modi can't be going and doing, uh, you know, fireside chats with anybody. He can, but as a, when he's going on an official visit as a dignitary, he. But then BJP has to find other ways of doing it. Uh, I I will just take a minute to tell you what this is being done, and I would give credit again, without any value judgment, without any this thing to Sam Petroda. Uh, he had said this way back, you know, much before 2019. That's when they started these foreign junkets of uh, Rahul Gandhi. 
He said, we are doing this as per strategy because we know here he doesn't get questioned. He gets a free pass, whatever he says in Berkeley or as XYZ. He right. can say whatever he is and then it gets amplified and uh, the message goes across. Whereas if he uh, speaks in India, that's why Sam Petroda today, uh, when the world has stopped calling him Papu, still reminds people he is not a Papu. He is, uh, uh, that, yes. that is that is sticking in Sam Petroda's mind. Even then, he had said, "Oh, India, whenever he speaks, people dismiss him as a yeah. Papu." This that, but here nobody calls him Papu. He can say things and he can make a point and get away. And so they have persisted on that strategy, whether it was Sam Petroda's or uh, any communication consultant or something, and that has worked. Uh, I will, uh, Priya. Um, I don't know whether you're coming to a break. I will say something uh, very candidly, which I actually said in another interview a few days back to another channel uh, uh, who uh, it will record it show, but they chose not to uh, air it. So I have under no obligation. They found it probably politically incorrect. Mm -hmm. BJP's problem is BJP has become a victim of its own uh, uh, communications uh, strategy. And you must give me two minutes uh, here. See what happened. In 2014, Congress mm -hmm. was absent in social. Rahul Gandhi did not even have a Twitter handle. Mr. Modi came. Mr. Modi found that that is uh, work because he could speak above the MSM, uh, mainstream media, through his own channel, uh, social media, and then he started as a monkey bath, etc. And that's why BJP went on to a situation when he started shunning mainstream media in press conferences or in foreign uh, trips, etc. And to the extent... BJP didn't feel it necessary to even appoint a media advisor, which they haven't done till date, PM's office media advisor. They thought they could do without. In the process, they alienated maybe even uh, sections of uh, the Indian mm -hmm. mainstream media who may not have been totally anti or as things go, you know, when the uh, 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 people who are weather veins or when the uh, things go, they, uh, change. I still remember the visuals. Priya, you would remember, Rashid would remember of Mr. Modi's, uh, which they thought would be his first press conference. That was his uh, Diwali meet at the BJP headquarters and how many of your friends were uh, jostling with each other to take selfies with him. You know, there was a lot of, in, even among your media, people of today turned Please. hostile at that point in time. They were very willing uh, to uh, move over and uh, become uh, get to his close circle, even if it's for access. But they were totally alienated. Uh, so as a result, BJP today uh, doesn't mm. have uh, any of them. And they've not, uh, they thought they'll probably cultivate an alternative set in mainstream media, which has not worked. Either those people don't have the credibility uh, who could have uh, been their spokesperson or simply it hasn't worked. So BJP is today uh, and they also have not developed other credible voices, whether at, you know, they had a great set of spokespersons before 2014 and they were very, very effective. Some of them moved to ministry, but those are people who are gone. So other than Mr. Modi, you know, when you're communicating, Somebody needs to, apart from being a good communicator, also carry a certain credibility. So if you don't have a mass space, you don't have anything where you can connect. So see, a Shivra Chauhan connects very well in yeah. his own way. Today, he's whatever, wherever he's speaking, he has an audience. A Gadkari can pull it off. Rajna Singh uh, can do it to some extent. But a lot of the other people who are speaking on behalf of Mr. Modi, they don't carry that uh, clout. So therefore, that alternative strategy has not happened. So and they're ending up just kind of uh, countering, as uh, 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 Rashid says, things on social media, which all falls into an echo chamber. To some extent, what Rahul Chandi is saying is going into his echo chamber, but there is a, a section who are maybe silently uh, uh, saying something and whatever BJP is saying uh, to counter him, that is going into an echo chamber and getting claps. But uh, is it really... Uh, uh, converting people who are in the middle, uh, changing the opinion, I don't think as yet. So the BJP has to uh, find, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, they need a new media consultant and I'm not offering my CVs if somebody thinks here. Uh, that I'm not confident for that, but they definitely, if they had an app for it. But that's a very provocative thought, uh, comment. And I'm going to come back uh, on this uh, just after a quick break. So stay with us. And welcome back to Cover Story. We are here discussing when we began 
and discussing Rahul Gandhi. But interestingly, the topic has gone on to the BJP's communication strategy. And Sandeep, I actually agree with you totally, which is what I noticed in Parliament also. When Rahul and Akhilesh are speaking from this side, or Mahua Moitra also, it's left to either Prime Minister or Amit Shah to counter. Even that's why Anurag Thakur gets so much heft, because they don't have speakers or they don't have speakers with heft. Unfortunately, they've sidelined all the speakers who had credibility, like a Gadkari and Shivraj. But Rashid, you wanted to come in on this? Yeah, I'm saying, and Priya, you remember, we have a very kind of, you know, mandate theory going all along. So whatever Rahul Gandhi says, as Mr. Ghosh is saying, it may be, you know, cutting both ways, but it is outcome of Haryana elections and for the better Jammu Kashmir that is going to determine. So if there is a sort of India alliance story in Kashmir and of course in Haryana Congress wins, which looks like, a you know, kind of, a, you know, pointer to that direction, then Rahul Gandhi will come stronger. So his U.S. visit may or may not have anything to do with Haryana elections, but it is one month after we'll be talking. Look, I mean, whatever Rahul Gandhi says makes an impact, and look at you know how you know Haryana has voted for the Congress, whether it's maybe a hard work of Huda or whatever be the factor, but it will credit will uh, you know will go to Rahul Gandhi. So Rahul Gandhi has parked himself. Well, look at India Alliance. Nobody is opposing his you know comments in in U.S. They all are whatever I have seen. They all are towing his lines. You look at Rahul Gandhi's popularity ratings, while Mood of the Nation says, uh, you know, Narendra Modi 49%, Rahul Gandhi 22%. So this 22% is actually very huge because normally when you have a person like Mr. Modi or Radhya Tai or Indira Gandhi, the, you know, the other sort of their sort of, con uh, you know, contenders were not, you know, were all in single digit. So therefore, I think Rahul Gandhi is, I may say so, is unstoppable at this point of time. Unstoppable, mostly unstoppable because uh, of him, but also a lot of because of the BJP's feelings. That's yeah. Uh, I agree. It should be put in quotes. <laughs> right. No, it's as he, as it says. You know, nothing. Uh, 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 you know, succeeds like success. Hello, can or you hear as me? I say, uh, yeah, I can. As I said, nothing succeeds like success, and uh, or uh, in corporate world, we say nothing succeeds like a successor. That's very telling, actually. <laughs> that's that's a good one. But a lot of uh, you know uh, what Rashid's po uh, sorry um, Sandeep's point was that a lot of uh, Rahul's um, unstoppableness is coming from the BJP's uh, own faults. You know they don't uh, should the BJP now it's we, we've had a debate like this is the BJP going the Congress way? You know we compared him to Indira Gandhi so many times, but now that seems to be coming true in more ways than one. Uh, Sandeep, could you say that? One thing I'll say again, the uh, cost of being provocative or outspoken, two things in BJP are right now telling, certainly uh, post uh, June 4. One is people are openly talking about, if you go to Maharashtra or elsewhere, people are talking openly about this whole culture of accepting people from even BJP core support. They will tell you what was a big point in taking, a, 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 you know, Ajit Pawar or for that matter, Ashok Chauhan. What did Ashok Chauhan bring to the table? Ajit Pawar brought a, uh, and that as people are, I, I think uh, if people thought at that stage, BJP again may have thought the same thing, nothing succeeds like success, having brought them a free sweep and get a char so far, nobody will forget. But because it didn't get char so far, people are questioning that of Maharashtra. Uh, thing. Secondly, I think today, uh, again, Rashid would uh, tell, I see down the line, uh, in a lot of this earlier, some of this factionalism uh, got a kind of steamrolled uh, if there was something, at least when it came to elections in the party. But just as we saw in UP, uh, uh, what happened during the thing, even post-elections, I find some of these factions or uh, which had happened in various states that have not, uh, uh, you know, uh, been uh, uh, mended. Uh, they're still there and they're quite visible um, in the polity. And uh, that is therefore the earlier, the very, very uh, monolithic structure which BJP uh, was projecting. Uh, all said and done, finally, two people's words found and things, everything fall in place. People, that is no longer visible. Uh, you know, you'll find a lot of places people will tell you, Acha, oh, bol hai to kya hua? Uh, this is my. Uh, of my area, uh, they, they are, uh, you know, 
uh, you come and talk to me, deal with me because I uh, uh, call the shots here. Okay. I'm saying within the state, you know, hmm. earlier somewhere uh, people would not uh, try to defy a whip or something, a message they get from somewhere else. So that is all that is happening. So BJP, uh, uh, quote unquote, is a different, and you know, whether you like it or not, um, and whether people deny it or not, uh, some of the differences uh, in terms of thinking process on these lines coming between uh, RSS and this is also visible. The few I am not yes. a, I don't know too many people in RSS, but the few people I know, some of the people who are, I think, uh, very intellectual sort, they also uh, uh, express their differences or both in terms of uh, the thinking as well as how some of the issues are being handled. So. Uh, uh, so yes, but these are all, I suppose, we are a part of evolution. Things go through a, a certain sure. natural uh, thing and we'll have to wait for a new blueprint to emerge. No, I agree. There is a churn now within the BJP also. And in fact, early on, the Congress used to give us more interesting conversations. But now we're getting that from the BJP as well. You know, early on with BJP, there was just nothing. It was just, you know... Um, uh, and and I'll, of... I'll add this uh, you very perceptive comment, and I'll just amplify uh, uh, that further. You see, today the funny thing is, <clears throat> and uh, Rashid again may agree or disagree, corroborate or, uh, or disagree, today uh, uh, Congress communication is very, very streamlined. Who do you hear speaking other than Rahul Gandhi? There are only two people, uh, not even Supriya Shrinath um, uh, nowadays. It's Jairam Ramesh and Pawan Khera. Yeah, uh, and even the local satraps. Okay, earlier Digvijay Singh would speak out of turn and give you some <laughs> something to you know munch over or some other state leader. None of them are speaking today. I think that whip is working. There are only two people, and you have Sam Petroda in the US <laughs> for what is worth, but nobody else is speaking. It was just yes. like uh, BJP Who is earlier. Alone to himself. Or, or, only uh, Mr. Modi and Shah would be speaking, mm. and nobody else would open their trap. Uh, uh, that is what has changed today in Congress okay. is what I, uh, I see. Rashid, do you agree? Yes, I, I think, would uh, Priya, today's conversation, high point has been uh, Mr. Ghosh praise for Sam Pitroda. I have not seen any uh, you know, commentator praise. yeah, uh, praising or acknowledging uh, Mr. Sam Pitroda's role. I think political parties, individuals need to reinvent themselves in after every five years, six years. There is some kind of cyclic thing. And Rahul Gandhi, I may say, he has reinvented himself in a very successful manner. And whereas the BJP seems to be failing and faltering on that count. I will only clarify or about uh, uh, Rashid, the writer. I am well, on that note. Uh, something Sam you want to say Pitrodas something quickly? Yeah. Yeah, role as a com uh, communication strategist, not in terms of what he is communicating or what he is doing. <laughs> it is only as a pure communication consultant or whatever he is. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. Okay, qualified praise for Swam Petroda. But thank you both. I think this has been a very interesting conversation, a freewheeling conversation uh, from the BJP to the Congress. I think we've covered everything. Hope to have you both back soon as candid as ever. Sandeep, we won't be editing your comments out. But for <laughs> now, thank you for the show. Thank you. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.